Welcome, welcome, welcome back to another episode, episode 18 of the Science Guy podcast. I am your co-host, Saya Riley, joined by the always lovely Scott McMillan. Sky, how are you doing? I am doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. And we have a very fun-filled episode with somebody that you got into know quite well how about this guy huh yeah so she is unm's women's soccer head coach heather dyke was named the mountain west coach of the year in back-to-back seasons in 2020 and 2021 unm has won four regular season titles 2018 2020 2021 and 2022 the 2021 Mountain West Championship title and made back-to-back NCAA tournament appearances in 2020 and 2021. And she has the second most wins in UNM history, Heather Dyke. As we start off our episode, we always start off with an icebreaker. So... Coach, if you could coach any other sport, what would it be and why? That's a very good question, Sky. First of all, I have to say, I listen to every episode. <laughs> I do. And you guys have, have been killing it. And I think it's super cool to hear your growth in the podcast game and, and also to hear other athletes come on and their story. And so thank you for doing that. And I feel like I've got the call up. Like, I've, you know, I've been ready for this. I've been yep. preparing. So I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, but I appreciate you guys having me on. So thank you for that. Of course. If I was to coach another sport, probably basketball. Probably okay. basketball. Yeah, I, I played basketball my whole life and really? love basketball. What yeah. uh, position did you play? Well, so interestingly enough, the kind of a legendary basketball coach here at UNM, Don Flanagan, I played for him in high school. So really? he left my high school to come down here and coach. And at the time, like UNM was Sweet Sixteen, and he he did a really good job here. So when I transferred, I almost came back and played basketball here. And I met with Coach Flanagan. He's like, no, nah, you're a soccer player. You have to be a soccer player. So I stuck with soccer. But in Nebraska, I played both sports. Wow. Yeah. That is pretty cool. Yeah. I saw you were a two-time All-State basketball player um, I, when I was doing my research on you. Quite the, quite the athlete. You know, I had, I had a little hoop game to me. It wasn't, it wasn't super exciting, but it was good enough to, to get a couple <laughs> awards. So how did you balance <laughs> soccer and then basketball at Nebraska. It was brutal. That's why I didn't do it when I transferred. <laughs> it was, I mean, you guys know playing one sport is hard enough, but yeah. especially sports that bleed into each other, it was just like exhausting. Because yeah. when the one season's over, I think you just student athletes need a another. break. Yeah. yeah. So going straight into basketball was was tough. Okay. Um, yeah. So I didn't I decided that was enough. One season was enough of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty cool. You attended, like you said, Nebraska um, and then transferred to uh, Florida State University and made the NCAA tournament in 2000 and 2001. Uh, what were those years like for you as a player? I know you guys were uh, the highest you were ranked was number nine in your senior year. What was those years like for you as a player and what do you remember from, from that? I mean, I, I think being a student athlete, those were my favorite years of my life. Like, I think to the things that you feel are stressors now when you're doing it are things that you actually end up missing when the game is gone. I mean, it, living with your roommates and traveling the world and playing in these high intense games. And I mean, you don't ever get that back. So those, those were the best years of my life. I loved being at Florida State. I absolutely loved my teammates. I still do. Um, and I'm incredibly grateful that I was able to be a student athlete and especially at Florida State. I loved it. I really had a great experience doing it. Florida State sounds like quite the place to be to play soccer. I mean, looking at them now is like they are just winning national championships over and over again. So it's pretty cool that you are able to like call that place home, I guess, and like have that. So that's really cool. Did you know that you always wanted to be a soccer coach after college soccer? I had no clue I wanted to be a soccer coach. Guy. <laughs> I, hadn't, I, hadn't, I didn't even know you could get paid to coach. Um, I've just always loved the game. I love soccer. And I've been really blessed in my life that, I mean, I don't think there's been two weeks in my life where I'm not on a soccer field at some point since I was like four years old. So the game has given me everything, like my education, my friendship, traveling the world, um, you guys, like my family, you know, it, it's I feel indebted to the game, and I think coaching is a really cool way to give back and try and create environments for athletes and, and for players that, you know, they get to experience some of the same things I did. But I had no clue you could coach. I had no clue that that was a thing or that you could follow that pathway. I think I just stayed in the game long enough that it rolled into it. Yeah. Okay. 
what's what's the secret to success for how far you've brought the women's soccer team? I know one of my most ingrained memories of my time there was uh, 2021 COVID season for you guys. And, you know, I think it was a seven o'clock, seven thirty night game and Coach G brought, you know, us out and we had the drums and we were banging the drums and that was for the Mountain West uh, championship. And, you know, that's just one of my favorite memories. And I'm not even a, a soccer player, but just as a fan, a fellow athlete, uh, what was your what's your secret uh, to success that you had over the years at your time here in New Mexico? I, I share that memory with you. So I, I that was one of my. Man, that was a fun night. Like it, it couldn't have been more dramatic if we tried. But yeah, um, I also know that we wouldn't have won it without you guys being out there. So I, I, th- I think just the sense of like student athlete camaraderie and, and all the coaches and everyone just kind of pushing us through, even though we we made it interesting on ourselves, was was a special night. And, and especially for that team that had just, to your point, been through COVID, and to wrap it up with the championship was was pretty special. So I, I share that memory with you. Um, I, honestly, I think our success in women's soccer is that we really try to to prioritize the person over the player. And, and we try to create a holistic environment where our athletes enjoy being here and enjoy getting to know each other. And we hope they leave here being really strong women. And if, if soccer's a piece of that, then I think we've done our job. But ultimately, we want to create an environment that, that they love to be a Lobo. As a women's soccer player, I second that. (laughs) I just think the environment that we have on the women's soccer team is like nothing that you will get anywhere else. And our coaches do such a good job of like making it super special, very fun, like football. You saw when we had the water slides and snow cones and pizza (laughs) one day. I think it was like after we we ran inside in the indoor and we were just like outside just playing sports. I think it was spike ball. Is that what the, yeah. And we just had such a fun, like, it's just, where do you see that happening? So. Nowhere because, because I would get mad, you know, <laughs> us during fall camp and I look peer out the door and I see all the stuff that you guys got going on. I'm like, oh, Coach G, can we get a piece of this please? Like, uh, so I know for those who don't know, you travel with the national team all over the country. Um, what is like your role with that team? And also what's your favorite city or country that you've been to when okay, traveling? Okay, Sky. Okay, yeah. Sky. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. Um, yeah. No, I've, I've been, like I said earlier, like I, I've, uh, I had a motto when I was younger just to say yes. Like, so anything that you could do that you could just give yourself experience and learn something like just say yes. Even if you're not paid, even if you're not like become invested in, in what in yourself like learn new trades and learn new crafts and, and I think because of that doors can open you know so yeah I've been lucky enough to travel with the the youth national teams all over the world um, with the full women's national team and in a couple of different capacities um, so sometimes as an assistant coach um, sometimes as like an analyst or a scout sometimes I flew the drone I mean <laughs> <laughs> like kind of anything that I could get myself there but um, I love being in situations where I feel like I'm the worst person there so I can learn. Like I love being around people that are experts in their craft. And I think because of my opportunities to go with some of these incredible coaches I've been with and players I've seen, like I feel like I learn. And ultimately I get to bring that back to University of New Mexico and and try and raise the level of our program here, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, Coolest place I've been probably, well, that's tough. (laughs) I've I've, I've done some cool ones. Um, Australia was pretty cool. New Zealand was pretty cool. Croatia was actually beautiful, surprisingly okay. beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been lucky enough to, to see some pretty, pretty cool yeah. places. I know. Cause I'm like, if I ever want to travel out the country, I know who to ask. That, I, <laughs> I got connections for you, Scott. Yes. Yeah. I've got connections for you. As an instructor for the USSF um, and FIFA, I saw that on, on your LinkedIn. How similar are those jobs to coaching? Um, what do you take from them that you're allowed or that you're able to use with our women's team um, to better the program? And I, I know like FIFA is, is not the video game. I've heard you're an expert at that. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, can, it can be in multiple capacities. And whenever I, you're back I love in town, my FIFA. you come up to our office and I'll take you on. Like, I'm, okay, re- I'm ready on. for a come FIFA on. showdown. <laughs> Look, look, I got the list ready. I'll put you number one. Okay. I'll put you number okay. one. Okay. Jump everybody. <laughs> we, have, we have a challenge. Um, okay. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, 
soccer is an unusual sport and, and we have licensing for our coaches. So it really is kind of a continued education. I mean, it's a master's degree in, in soccer, which is, I, I think, really beneficial. Um, so there's all these different levels all the way from like a grassroots coaching course all the way up to a pro license in the United States. Um, and U.S. soccer teaches those here um, in our nation. And then FIFA really kind of oversees it's a governing body of soccer everywhere. So with FIFA, I really work more as a capacity of, of like women's women's development, which is something that I feel really passionate about. I mean, I think this game, it's the world's game. And I think the more that we can get women involved, keep women involved and, and make opportunities for them equitable is a pretty special thing to do. So with FIFA, we travel the world and, and we um, people apply to bring in FIFA and, and we go and fund different projects. We start leagues, we start um, refereeing, we, we help them capacity building, even if they're just working in the office. So that's a kind of a special place in my heart as well. Like I think anytime you can grow the game, it, it's something unique to be a part of. What is it like being a woman in a male dominated profession and what has helped you to become successful? Good question, Sky. You, you. You're on it today. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I have three brothers, so I, I kind of grew up in a male world. I, so I, I never, I never thought it was all that different uh, originally. And then, I, you know, I am part of Title IX. Like I, I was able to get my education paid for. I was able to you know, do all these things because of because of that. So I never felt like I, I really was less than or, or didn't have opportunities really until I got into coaching. And then it is, you know, it is different. It is harder to walk into a room full of men and you're their instructor. Mm -hmm. um, but I love that. Like, I love the challenge of, of proving yourself. And I love the challenge of growing and getting better. And even if you flail a little bit, like, try again. Um, and I think you have to prove yourself once or twice, but ultimately the language of the game is what matters. And if you can speak that, it doesn't matter what gender you are. And I think because of that, like I've made some really great friends and had some cool opportunities and like not being afraid, but also making sure that I'm an expert at what I'm doing so that, you know, when you do walk into those rooms that you're not a poser, you're not acting. Mm -hmm. We talk about all the time, um, especially with our international athletes of them, the difference between professional uh, matches, collegiate matches, uh, international matches, you know, what, is, what do you see as a coach, the biggest factor in the difference between coaching internationally, uh, professionally, and in the collegiate level? Yeah, there's a lot of rules to the game in college that are, are different. Um, so if, if you're coaching a professional level, you only get three substitutes a game, depending on what league you're in, which really limits how you play and, and how you teach. Um, and then in, internationally, I mean, it's a win at all costs. Like it, it's <laughs> like you're trying to win a World Cup. You're not there to develop players. Um, so that's different. And I think when you are kind of involved at that level, it's a little bit more cutthroat than you think. Um, and for a lot of the women, you know, honestly, some of them make their living based on like how much they're on social media, which isn't the way that it should be, but it's the way it is. So it, it's... Yeah, it's a difference of like a collegiate environment where it really is representing a school and representing a university. And it can be about development and it can be about like more culture. And in those environments, it's win. And you need to win right away and you need to, that's all there is to it. And if you don't, you're fired immediately. And it's not that way in college. Like we work for, you know, a, an AD that recognizes that it's about holistic development. And I think that makes our job so much better because we can do what we actually love. Shout out Eddie Nunez. Shout out Eddie Nunez. <laughs> Absolutely. So a third of our team is from New Mexico, which I don't know if a lot of people know that, which is I think it might be a little bit more than a third, honestly, because I remember um, where we separated into groups to take our pictures and there were so many people from New Mexico on our team. Even our coach Heather and Paul are both from New Mexico. Talk about the rise in level of talent that the state has and how it's contributed to the success of the program. I think New Mexico is a talented place. I mean, I, I think purely on population, like we just don't have the same numbers that everyone else does. So if you look at, you know, the, uh, last I looked to try out for ODP in Southern California Olympic Development Program in Southern California, there's 20,000 players in an age group. We have 16,000 registered players from 8 to 18, male and female. So you're just not even playing the same numbers game. And it does factor into it because the more players you have, the more talent there's going to be. And, and that's part of it. But I always I always felt when I wasn't here that New Mexico gets overlooked a little bit. And, and part of that was just opportunity. But there's very, very good players here. And, and we've built our programs on the backs of a lot of them. And 
Um, I think they just get missed by their schools. So it's it's important to me that the best New Mexicans stay stay here and play here and get to wear New Mexico on their shirt. And and you can't do it with just New Mexicans. There's no doubt about it. Like players like you, Sky, and and some other players that we get, but it's something that we're passionate about is, is trying to make sure that they can stay home and, and represent their hometown. I think that's very important too. I, I, I know the season didn't play out um, for you guys going five, six and six. What are some of the positives that you take away from the year and some of the uh, things that you want to change going into the next season? Yeah. I, I mean, I candidly, I don't really judge our success based on outcome. I really don't. I mean, I, I think, you'll burn yourself out really quickly if as a coach, the only thing you care about is winning. Um, and winning's fun. Don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm hyper competitive, but it's not the only thing. And I mean, honestly, I, I think we had a great year in terms of like some players really stepped up and did some big things. We had some young players that kind of had to learn the ropes. Um, we had a pretty incredible senior class that you have to say goodbye to, but they're always going to be a part of our family. And when you feel that, like you're building something special, you know? So I thought we played great soccer. We dominated a lot of teams and yeah. didn't score as many goals yeah. as we wanted to, but um, I, I would not change the process. I think you have to develop people and I think you have to believe in people. And um, if that doesn't always lead to a result, then you have to be able to accept that too. So uh, I want to win a championship again, but I want to do it the right way. And, and that comes from sometimes the process doesn't go the way you want it to go immediately. What does the off season look like for you guys? Give us a week's overview of the training regimen. I've seen it a little bit on GroupMe, but I don't know what it looks like right now. Yeah, so the spring season, I mean, you know, every, every team has kind of their off season. So for us, it, it, I think the spring is hard. The NCAA gives us five competitive dates. So there's five days that we can play games. Um, so what we try to do as a staff is find ways to make it fun because it's not a lot of fun when you're training and you don't get to play games. We know that. I mean, we feel the same way. It's a lot of training <laughs> with no fun. So um, we've tried to build and like incorporate some scrimmages. We've tried to, um, we do a lot of fun days where we like just do something completely different where the mm -hmm. team can kind of, re uh, you know, relax and rest a little bit. Um, but yeah, we, we train every day or we lift every day. Um, and then as much as we can, we try to get rid of the monotony of, of one thing over and over and, and do some different things. Yeah. But I love the spring because I think people can develop not under pressure. Um, but I also know as a player, it can feel like a grind. Yeah, definitely. And uh, back on the fun days, my favorite one was pickleball. <laughs> uh, most people don't know this. Most yeah, people most don't, people know, this. don't yeah. know this. But but Sky and I are pretty much undefeated in pickleball. Yeah, we take all challengers. Yes, we do. So whoever wants to smoke, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> we let you think I, you're going to win, and somehow yes, we pull it off in yep. the end. Sky. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you guys are calling me out to go find somebody and join you guys on the, at the pickleball because yeah. you, you guys would kick my behind. I'm not going to. Somehow, Sky she got a little yeah. um, like um, she has a good serve. Like you would not be ready for that. It's like a little like I want to say like a little curve a little, almost. Little spin, a little yeah, spin. a little spin. Yeah. And then Sky plays in that. We're tough. We're yeah, tough to beat. we're pretty. Yeah, good thing we're so humble so, about it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so talking about the fun days, how do you come up with the fun days? Like, what goes into that? Is that like a team group decision? Do you guys vote? Like. How do you know, okay, these uh, these women deserve a fun day and this is just something that we're going to go out and do? Yeah, I mean, I, again, I, I think it's just trying to recognize that we know how hard it is to be a student athlete. We get it. And, and you know, I, I say that and I also think it's a privilege to be a student athlete. Like there is more that comes with it, but you also get more from it. Um, but I also know that every day on the soccer field, that's, that's a grind. That's yeah. hard. It's tiring. And so, you know, just breaking that up and, and playing some different sports is it's great team building. It's fun to do. It's yeah. easy for us. Um, so it's just something that we've tried to invest in. But I think last year you guys picked the fun days. Yeah, we picked the fun days. Yeah. So we did a uh, hot yoga one of the days, mm -hmm. which was, oh, my gosh, so really hard. <laughs> it was hot and hard. I just like laid there for like the last 20 minutes. I couldn't. I was done. It was yeah. so hard. Yeah. We did. <laughs> and, I, I think one of my favorite ones was uh, the dance team was nice enough to teach us oh, a routine. Oh, yes. And I've never in my entire life seen the soccer <laughs> athletes like that gas. And it was just the warm up. <laughs> Like they put them the through this hardcore warm up, yes. and yeah, I thought the girls I was were like, gonna oh die. Oh my gosh, this is so hard. Yeah, but yeah. we had some good dancers. No, we did. Yeah. Yeah. It wasn't me, but we had some good dancers. <laughs> 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 yeah, that was a fun one for sure. What are your plans for the upcoming season, uh, fall twenty twenty four? 
I'm excited for the fall of 2024. I mean, I, th- I think that's the cool part about the spring is you start to see some people step up and find some confidence. And um, you've seen him, Sky, like he yeah. came out the night we were training. But I'm really excited about some of our young freshmen that are kind of finding a little bit of a groove in the way that they're playing and taking on a bigger role. Um, I think, you know, a few of our seniors right now are just playing insanely good. I'm excited about some of our players coming in. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, I, I think it's starting to come together. And that to me is the fun part of the spring is that you get to do that without constantly worrying about winning and losing. So I'm excited about that. And there's some really good players, young players coming in. So it's um, kind of the next level of the building block, you know, just keep keep improving it and, and try and win championships. I mean, that, yeah. that's the goal. Well, I'm excited to see you guys play next year. I played in one of the, uh, what's it called, the scrimmages. Yeah. And you guys look really good. So I'm excited to see what, uh, <laughs> Sky, I was Sky. a little gassed, but <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. <laughs> Sky, you, made, you made a couple of great runs. And then all Thank of a sudden you. Sky was playing defender and I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> Take her out. <laughs> oh. I wish I could play soccer. I really do. You can. can you come out. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to need some work. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to work in charge. Yeah. <laughs> We actually talked about doing that, about trying to set up a, a penalty shootout with the with the football team and the soccer really? team. Really, that would be a fun one. Let so me if, we, film. if we do that, you guys, you guys yeah. can come out with the podcast. And, yeah, and I'll film play it. by play. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. Look, yeah. Look, I've already imagined in my scenario if I ever got into a World <laughs> Cup penalty shootout. I know I'm taking seven steps over, two to the left. Dang. I'm going straight, and I'm gonna take. A, I'm a. I'm a. I'm a kind of dead leg it, but I'm not. I'm gonna make him think I'm about to kick it, and then he's gonna jump away, and I just send it to the other. Like okay, in it's, my in my mind. Yeah, it's just I can't that wait easy. to see this. It's yeah. just that easy. Yeah. 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 No. It's, it's just <laughs> <my own. laughs> I, already, I already know. I don't know how they make it. So it's just. Uh, I wish I played soccer. Um. But no, in recent soccer news, and it feels so weird to say this because we just had her on, um, former Lobo Paris Dalton uh, signed with Burnley FC a couple of weeks ago. She was on our third episode um, talking about how playing professionally was something that she always dreamt about and her anticipation of making it come true to just continue to grow and grow. How do you feel when players, your players, turn professional what is it like for you seeing them accomplish their dreams yeah, I'm proud I mean I'm proud and especially I don't think everybody quite knows Paris's story as you know intimately as we do like it was a huge growth process for Paris to be playing professional soccer right now and something that I think she really learned that she can own like it, it's not it's not going to be up to anyone else if you want to go play pro you have all the tools to do it but like you have to do it. Don't let someone tell you no. Keep fighting for it and keep pushing for it. And I think every year of her career since I've known her, like she just does that continuously. So for her to move back home, kind of be told no once or twice and just keep fighting through it, I'm just I'm proud of the woman that she is. Like and the soccer is a piece of that for sure, but it's it's just cool growth. And I feel equal pride when they leave and and they go like f- pursue their other dreams. And we have doctors and lawyers and teachers and people haven't figured it out yet and social media stars and <laughs> but they're just always part of our family and that that to me is something that I think is the coolest thing ever like just getting a text from alumni that keeping us involved in what they're doing and or reaching out because whatever it is but th- we have a pretty cool family and, and that's I, th- I think what we're most proud of in the time that we've been here. Have you gotten a chance to watch them play professionally in person? Any uh, former Lobos? I have yeah actually um, Jaden Edwards when she made her debut for the rain um, I knew, I know the Reigns coach quite well, and she had texted and said, I think I'm going to put Jaden in today. And so Paul Maestas, uh, our assistant coach, and I jumped on a flight. Carly was going to come, and she was out of town, but we flew up to Portland to see Jay's um, debut, which was pretty special, yeah. pretty cool. And then um, I tried to get to Iceland to go see Lex, and I, I just never <laughs> got over there. Um, I would love to go, uh, I'd love to go see Paris and England if yeah. I could, but um, I didn't get to see Jen in Mexico. We, we've had quite a few over the years, but it's... Uh, I watch every game I possibly can that streams, guys. Yeah. So yeah, one yeah, in yeah. person so far. It was a cool moment. Yeah. 
Definitely. I agree. I feel like any um, time you get to watch like any of your players or even a teammate play professionally in person is just so cool. And then you get to like see them after the game, take pictures and just like. Yeah. You have a lot of teammates yeah. From, yeah. from Washington State probably playing right now, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's fun to watch them. I mean, I haven't been able to watch the, any of them in person, but yeah. I always like keep up and see like what they're yeah. doing. So it's cool. It's really cool to see. It's a cool thing. Anytime somebody, you know, finds a next level of who they are and, and they get to experience that. It's, that's a cool thing to yeah, watch. Yeah, definitely. Because it's not easy and not everybody can do it. So it's cool to be able to see that. I agree. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm trying to get myself to a, a soccer game because, man, they be going, the fans, that's, I just <laughs> love when fans go crazy. And then what makes it even better is I saw uh, the U.S. women's team, they just played Columbia, right? Um, and they were getting into it. I was like, yeah, I was going to go crazy. And then Trinity <laughs> came over. I was like, yeah. You know? He's converted him. Just, I mean, he's, I him like, he's a, he's a full-on fan. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Because I love, I love to see competition in other sports. And then I also like to see it, stereotypes and different, you know, perspectives be broken down by these players performing excellent on the field, but also having that, you know, I don't want to call it animosity, but just that love of the game to where it's like, okay, I want to be the best and I got to beat you. And, you know, I'm not going to take any type of willy nilly, you know, fouls or kick, you know, like, and that's one thing I, I don't, I don't ever want to be a part of is being, you know, tackled and then getting a yellow card. Cause if somebody comes and cleats me from behind, punches are flying. Like, that's just, <laughs> Sky, Sky was support you, say, you don't want to play me yeah, then. Yeah, yeah. You Sky don't want to play against me. <laughs> Sky's no. crib for, for one really hard hit every game. <laughs> yeah. You know, one, one of the cool things, though, to your point, Sky, is that I think, like, there's very few times that women's sports have been transcendent of that. And that's one thing that you can walk anywhere and say the name Alex Morgan and people know who that is. Serena Williams and people know who that is. Now Caitlin Clark and people know who that is. And I think it's something that's been really cool about women's soccer in our country is that they have been revenue producing. They are icons. They've been incredible role models. People know who they are. And, and you can't say that about women's sports. Um, and when you have that and you have that passion and people can see that women can play and do have the passion you're talking about, it changes things. So I think it's really cool to hear your, your love for the game and that you know the women's game too. It, it's, that's a special thing. Look, I, I don't know why, but my fondest memories have always been other sports. Like, it just has been. I remember, you know, I think it was 20, maybe it was 2016, because I think that was Abby Wambach's last um, World Cup. I, I remember when they were playing, uh, was it Brazil? China, uh, Japan? Brazil, Brazil. Yeah, just, you know what I'm saying? And like her fierce competitor, I remember Carly Lloyd, three, you know, her hat trick. Uh, I think that was in the final, was it? Was it not? Um, Carly Lloyd's hat trick was a uh, Vancouver final World Cup. Yeah, yeah. like when she hit a shot she, from half kick, field. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just started yeah, screaming yeah, yeah. Yeah. like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Well, Coach, that was amazing. I appreciate you coming on to the podcast, speaking your truth, and also showing us what it's like behind. Um, on the on the sideline, the game, your perspective on it, and then you know your amazing stories and just hearing the um, you know little anecdotes about your experiences and your time playing the sport, but now also not only coaching it but you know helping get grow. So I appreciate you coming on. Uh, can't wait to get to next season and possibly attend you know a few uh, matches if I'm still in New Mexico, but uh, hopefully I am. Hopefully you are. Yeah, hopefully you are. And, and thank you guys again for having me on. It's fun to fun to chat with you. I always get to talk to Sky, but it's, it's nice to meet you too, Sky. <laughs> Nice yeah, thank you, you, Coach, for coming on. It's been, this has been such a fun episode, just talking about all these different things and um, just being here with you because I barely get to see you as much as uh, I usually would when I was in season or fall season, spring season. Um, so thank you again for joining us and coming on. We really appreciate you. And yeah, thank you. And also wish you the best of luck in the incoming season. Thanks, Guy. Of course. Thanks, Guy. <laughs> that was Coach, also 
I forgot to tell her that I will make a date and an appointment and we will play that FIFA match. Um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go. You know? gonna, you're going to come in. I'm going to be studying. Scott. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> that was coach. I'm going to be getting ready for the game. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> that was, that was coach. Scott, I just, man, you have an awesome coach. I agree. I wish I played under her. Like, I love doing this. This is so fun. Like, <laughs> Not not only hearing the players, but now hearing, you know, coach's perspective. You had, you know, broadcaster come in before, former players. But I think I think coach is the first coach we've had. All my begging paid off. <laughs> <laughs> coach, we were gonna get you on regardless. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> we were gonna get you on. <laughs> oh yeah, since day one, I'm like, hey, as soon as the seats dry up, I'm in. As soon as you guys run out of teams, I'm in. Uh, Well, that was episode 18. We have another special guest coming in, I think in two weeks now, just because spring break is approaching next week. Um, So we hope you guys enjoyed this episode and we can't wait to see you guys in two weeks. Yeah, two weeks, guys. We'll uh, give you a chance to uh, refuel, you know, retool. This is kind of like your halftime. So you're a player too now. Go in, make some adjustments, and then uh, when you come out, you know, we'll, we'll still be right here. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you in two weeks. We love you guys. Thank you for always listening and tuning in. And as always, go Lobos. Go Lobos. Go Lobos. Go Lobos.